Yo, welcome back everybody to a brand new video here on the second channel and I am super excited because we got some brand new card reveals from our November set Paradox Rift to take a look at. We got some brand new EXs revealed and we even got an item card getting reprinted and this item that is getting reprinted might actually be a pretty impactful card to have in our format when it comes out. I'm excited to take a look at all of them of course and uh, if y'all are going to go on to enjoy the video make sure to leave a like on the video and of course if you're new here to the second channel, make sure to subscribe down below. Help me on the road to reaching 9,000 subs. And let me know what you think of these uh, cards down below, including the brand new reprinted card. I'm interested to hear your thoughts on all that. Uh, we'll start things off here with a few cards that did get revealed throughout the week leading up to these big reveals last night. Uh, we'll start off with the uh, Simi Poor, Simi Sage, and Simi Seer. Now, usually the Simis have never been that good, but actually these are kind of decent. Uh, we'll start off with Simi Sage, which might be the best of the three. It's got the ability Monkey Trio, where if you have Simi Sage, Simi Seer, and Simi Poor in play, ignore all colorless energy in the attack cost this Pokemon uses. So, Essentially, its main attack, Arm Thrust Needle, only needs a single Grass Energy. It does 100 damage, and during your opponent's next turn, prevent all damage done this Pokemon by attacks from your po uh, from Pokemon that have an ability. So, effectively, this is a Lolan Vulpix V-Star, um, where it doesn't, you know, it's immune to a Pokemon with abilities. Obviously, that's not a bad attack. I mean, against decks like Charizard, Shenpao... This can be a very annoying wall. It only does 100 damage, but it is a grass Pokemon, keep in mind. So it's actually pretty good against Charizard um, because you can actually hit Charizard for weakness and two-shot it while you're immune to Charizard being able to damage you. Yeah, you can get a hit by like Charmeleon and Radiant, or actually no, not Radiant Charizard, Charmeleon. I was thinking of Mimikyu, but uh, yeah, honestly, not a bad card. Now, it obviously is a bit of a kind of a cost. You do need to have all the other simis in play, but thanks to like Battle VIP Pass, not that hard to get all the different simis in play to get the uh, Simi Sage going. Um, we got Simi Seer with Monkey Trio, where of course it does the exact same thing. Um, and its main attack does one for, uh, technically one for 90, or 190, and then does 30 to itself. I mean, 190 damage for a single fire energy isn't bad. Um, you're not really hitting much for weakness. That's the only downside, but you combine that with like a Choice Spell, Defiance Band, or I don't know, splashy gloves or rubber gloves. You can one-shot Maridon's basic Vs and Chen Pao's. So not the worst card ever. It's probably the harder hitter. And then we got Simi Poor, which is a water Pokemon. Um, does the same thing, and its main attack, Shower with Insults, does 50 damage, does 30 damage to each of your opponent's bench Pokemon. I think Simi Poor is obviously the weaker of the three because Manaphy is kind of popular right now, and you know, opponent just benches Manaphy, and then the Shower attack isn't really that good 50 and 30 spread isn't bad if manaphy didn't exist 30 damage spread is actually pretty good especially for a single water energy um but yeah the simbies are actually kind of cool i think the sage one is obviously going to be the most playable because it's got the best attack its attack is pretty useful against charizard so not bad i mean we got ourselves a fun little rogue deck right here with these new uh reveals which is kind of cool we do have a new item revealed with Defiance Vest. Um, if you have more prizes remaining than your opponent, um, the Pokemon this card is attached to takes 40 less damage from attack. So, obviously, like Defiance Band, where if you are behind in prizes, you can, you know, do 30 more damage to the Pokemon. Or, Defiance Vest, you take 40 less. Honestly, that's not terrible. 40 less damage is a considerable um, amount to decrease damage by. Obviously, we know that we have stuff like... Um, full face guard in the format um rigid band is a big one but i think taking 40 actually makes a big difference that 10 more damage can actually go a long way in my opinion like specifically let's say you're to put this on arbok ex right arbok has got 270 hp you put the rigid band on it, it's got 300 okay that doesn't make too much of a difference against like shen pao for example where now shen pao all they have to do is just you know they just discard the same amount of energy and knock you out where you have a Defiance Vest on, Arbok effectively goes up to 310 HP, where then Chen Pao needs to discard 6 energy to KO. So, Defiance Vest does make a bigger difference than Defiance, um, or than uh, Rigid Band. Um, it's not bad. It might be good against Iron Hands, in my opinion, because Iron Hands only does 120 damage. So, Defiance Vest might actually be kind of clutch into, into uh, the Iron Hands matchups, in my opinion. But, it's not a terrible tool. I don't know... What decks will play this, to be honest with you? Maybe Blastoise EX, just because it's already got that ability. So, I mean, you can take minus 70 damage. That ain't too shabby. You got one bulky turtle on your hands. Not the worst card ever. Not the best. I mean, this guy said it best. <laughs> Defiance Band. Pretty mid-item. All right. Now, we're going to go on to the meat and potatoes of the new card reveals here. We got Armor Rouge, Galisopod, 
and more revealed. So yeah, we got some new EXs, and of course we have a brand new item that got re I don't know why I said brand new. It's not brand new. We got a new item that got reprinted. Um, let's take a look at what we got here. Starting these off, we have a new Toad Cruel here with a really cool ability. Um, with that ability, uh, Mycelium Colony, um, which thank you for everyone who said the correct pronunciation for uh, Toad Cruel EX's ability. On the Toad School video I posted yesterday, but cards in your opponent's discard pile can't be put into their hand through the effects of trainers or abilities they use. That's actually really powerful. That means that um, Super Rod, or not Super Rod, um, Rescue Carrier and Superior Energy Retrieval being the big one are completely negated. That's actually pretty good. Being able to shut off Superior Retrieval effectively gives you a really easy matchup against Shen Pao. Now, obviously, Toad School has to sit on the bench. You're not going to attack with it, but... Being able to, like, shut off superior energy retrieval on Shen Pao is kind of clutch. Like, this could be a really cool, like, control-style card um, to try to beat Shen Pao with. Because Shen Pao, like, its whole crux is to abuse superior energy retrieval. Without superior energy retrieval, Shen Pao would be pretty bad. But superior energy retrieval makes that deck so easy to just KO stuff. But now that Toad Cruel is a thing, I mean, if you just put Toad Cruel in play, all of a sudden, Shen Pao can't play superior energy retrieval. That ain't bad at all. Now, we'll have to see how good this card really is. I'm sure there's other uses for the ability than shutting off Superior. That's the main card I can think of. Anyways, but it's actually not a bad card. Um, yeah. Next up, we got a new Magby here. It is a baby Pokemon with uh, Gradual Heater. During your opponent's next turn, this Pokemon is damaged by attack. You put six damage on the attacking Pokemon. Not the worst attack ever, but, I mean, you're never really going to want to have a third HP Pokemon in the active anymore. Not in this day and age. Um... We got the new Char Cadets here. Um, I think, nah, I mean, this is ADHP 2 Retreat. I don't think there's an optimal Char Cadet. But we do have an Armor Rouge EX. Really cool card to get an EX. Armor Rouge, obviously, a really cool card. We've I've done multiple videos using Armor Rouge before. And this EX actually is pretty cool. It actually reminds me a lot of uh, Senescorch VMAX from back in the day. It's got the ability Crimson Armor. When this Pokemon is at full HP, it takes 80 less damage from attacks. That's actually pretty insane. So if this thing takes no damage right off the bat, I mean, 26 HP... Plus the 80, that's 340 health it effectively has. That's a lot of HP. That gives Armor Rouge a ton of bulk. And then, of course, you do have the ability Scorching Bazooka, which for two Colossus Energy does 40 plus 40 more damage treats Fire Energy on him, this Pokemon. So it's quite literally like Senna Scorch VMAX, except you don't get to point energy from the discard onto your Armor Rouge. Now, this card ain't bad. You can, of course, combine it with the Armor Rouge from Scarlet and Violet. You can combine it with Magma Basin. You can combine it with Charizard EX. And you can combine it with Pogo Charizard. I think Pogo Charizard is probably going to be the fun way to play it because you can actually double the Fire Energy. You are allowed to use Pogo Charizard with Armor Rouge's attack. That technically does count as double the energy attachment for the attack cost. I've done this with Sun Scorch before. Honestly, not a bad card. I mean, Fire Pokemon have been kind of slacking. I mean, yeah, we have Charizard EX, but that's a dark Pokemon. Um, and that's just kind of its own archetype. So Fire Pokemon maybe needed some, like, big hitter. And I think Armor Rouge could be the one. I mean, that ability is really good, too. Obviously, if Armor Rouge takes damage, the ability goes away. That's fine, though. You can maybe combine this with Defiance Vest to, like, make it take 120 less damage right off the rip. Giving it some pretty insane bulk. So I definitely like Armor Rouge EX. I think it's a really cool card. And uh, there's enough support for this card to actually work. So not a bad EX at all. Definitely, definitely not terrible. We do have a new Wimpod here with Secret Snack. Um, it's usually usually good to look at Wimpods because anytime they print like a good Wimpod and then a good Glisspod, usually the attack is kind of like decent. But we do have Glisspod EX here, which we've infamously had a good Glisspod EX cards before, or GXs anyways. Yeah, Glisspod's always been a pretty good card. Let's take a look at what this one does. Um, it's a water Pokemon, not a grass type, so it's got a different typing, which unfortunately if it was a grass, I would have been better because Charizard. But it does have the attack Strategic Retreat for a water and a double turbo. It does a whopping 170 damage and then you discard an energy from this pokemon and if you do switch this pokemon with one of your bench pokemon so i mean all in all kind of a mid attack um i mean it's easy to power up obviously it is a water pokemon so at the very least it does have good synergy with irida and palkia v star unfortunately the attack is just kind of mid i mean 170 damage isn't terrible i mean you're two shotting most things but you're also not one shotting stuff right and you probably have to have a double turbo on, and you have to give up an energy every time you do the attack, which is also not ideal. The good thing is you can play it like a hit and run deck. You can use Glycopod with Mimikyu and Klefki, which isn't terrible per se. You can also play this with the new 151 Weezing, I guess. So, I mean, there are some cool cards you can combine Glycopod with. It's really not that bad of a card. It honestly could be 
the best hidden run deck in the format. That's not Alakazam, even though Alakazam's not a hidden run deck. It could be the best, like, hidden run card in the format because you're able to go into Mimikyu. And Mimikyu's not bad right now, in my opinion. So, all in all, Glissabot is, like, okay. It's not the best EX ever, not the worst card ever. I think Armor Rouge is probably better, but it's not a bad card. If this was a Grass type, I think it would have been 10 times better because it would have been really good against Charizard EX, right? Because Mimikyu's already really good against Charizard, so this should have been a grass type. I think if it was a grass type, it would have been better. But then again, if it was a grass type, it wouldn't have had water in the attack cost, and water energy isn't that hard to fulfill right now, so ah, maybe it's for the best that it's a water type. I don't know. Um, we got a new uh, Veluza here. Of course, we've uh, done a video on the another Veluza, but it's got the ability cut for the job. If this Pokemon is in the active spot and is knocked out by damage from an attack from your opponent's Pokemon, move two water energy from this Pokemon to one of your bench Pokemon. Not a bad ability. I mean, as an early game attacker, this could be okay. I mean, it does 60 plus 20 for each water energy on it, so it can do 120 for three. I mean, it's a nice, like, early game attacker, and the ability isn't bad. Being able to conserve a water energy like that is pretty good. It's only, you know, two waters, not three, not not more, but just two, but that's fine. I mean, conserving energy isn't a bad thing. Veluza actually could be a pretty playable card um, in some kind of water deck. I don't think you're going to play it in, like, Shen Pao, but, I mean, it's not a bad card, right? Being able to conserve water like that isn't bad. It's a nice one-prize attacker um, that can deal with other one-prizers, and it's not, a, it's not a bad early game kind of option in some kind of water deck. And, again, the energy, cons the energy conservation, pardon me, is really, really good, and I do like this card. Um... We got a new Altaria EX. Yeah, we're getting all the EXs today. We got the ability Humming Heal. Once you're in your turn, you may heal 20 damage from each of your Pokemon. That's not bad either. I mean, healing 20 from each Pokemon ain't terrible. And then you got the attack Light Pulse for a Water and a Metal. Does 140 damage. During your opponent's next turn, prevent all effects of attacks from your opponent's Pokemon um, done to this Pokemon. So it's only the effects of attacks. You're obviously going to shut off stuff like, uh, I don't know... Uh, Sleep, confusion, whatever weird effect is out there. Um, you do prevent Sableye from working against Altaria unless they rope you, which is, I guess, kind of cool. All in all, the ability is going to be where this card is. He's play. Being able to heal 20 from each of your Pokemon is kind of cool. This ability does stack, so you can have, like, four Altaria in play, heal 80 a turn. You can also play with, like, Radiant Serena to add some extra healing in. Not a bad card at all. I definitely think Altaria EX is pretty playable. It is a bit of a liability, though, to have him play. I mean, it's only got 260 HP. Uh, but the ability isn't bad, right? You can play it with some kind of healing deck. Maybe play with, like, Gudra V-Star or something and have, like, a really cool heal combo deck. Because, again, the ability does stack. You can have, like, a bunch of Altarias in play. Heal a ton of damage from all your Pokemon. So, yeah, Altaria EX, not too terrible either. Honestly, the EX cards that have been revealed so far haven't... They haven't been, like, insanely good, but they haven't been insanely bad either. Um, we got a new Mousehold EX. Now, this card is really, really cool. Um, it's got the ability Solidarity. If this Pokemon is in the active spot and is damaged by an attack from your opponent's Pokemon, put three damage counters on the attacking Pokemon for each of your Tandem Mouse and Mousehold in play. That's pretty insane. So, if you have an entire full board of Mouses, which you're going to have to play, that means you can't really be playing, like, Bibbrel and Luminion. If your entire board are Mouseholds, I think the attacking Pokemon takes 220 damage or something. That's a lot of damage to take. You can also, of course, combine this. Oh, no, no, it does 180, not not 220. You can kind of combine it with Ventral Punch to make it do 220. I mean, that's pretty good. I mean, we've seen cards like Chestnut EX before where, like, if Chestnut gets attacked, the opponent's taking, like, potentially 120 damage for each Chestnut in play. But with Mousehold, the attacking Pokemon is taking a ton of damage. And, I mean, it's not a bad card. I mean, it's got 230 HP, so it's not super weak. I mean, it is a stage one. There are other Mouseholds in the format, not just the EX. So you do have some synergy with, like, the other, you know, Mouseholds we have in the game. Not a bad card. I mean, the ability alone makes it kind of funny. I mean, being able to, like, potentially knock something out for KOing you is kind of cool. So one of my favorite EXs revealed so far, I think. Um, definitely a really cool card. Um with a really cool ability. Again, you have to make your entire deck just mouses, but that's worth it because that ability is pretty pretty stellar for for what it does. I mean, the attack isn't bad. Greedy Fangs for a double turbo does 100 damage. Combine that with the ability. I mean, that's 220 if you want to go down that Ventral Punch route, which I recommend you do play Ventral Punch with Mouse Hole. So Mouse Hole could be a really fun new rogue deck to try out with uh, the new set. Yeah, really cool card. Not bad at all. Um, next up, we do have a new Esfratha. Um, I'd probably butcher that name, but it does have the ability all seen when you place Pokemon from your hand to evolve one of your Pokemon during your turn. You may use this ability during your opponent's next turn, prevent all damage from and effects of attacks on this Pokemon. So you get some immunity for a turn, kind of like Garchomp from Brilliant Stars. Its attack only does 70 damage, and if you have Tulip in your discard pile, um, this attack does 70 more damage. So 140 for two, not bad. Its ability is cool. If Scubanet maybe existed, this could be a lot better with like the new Zatu. 
Um, not the worst card ever. I mean, the ability is cool, obviously. There just needs to be a way to, like, reuse this card, right? That would make it a lot more playable. Um, finally, we got two new cards. The first one we want to look at is the brand new, once again, I don't know why I'm saying brand new, the reprint of Counter Catcher. Yes, this is a very big reprint. Counter Catcher was a very strong card back in the day. So effectively what it does, you can only play this card if you're behind in prizes. Um, you switch in one of your opponent's match Pokemon to the active spot. So it's literally a free gust effect on an item. However, you have to be behind in prizes. This effect is insane. I mean, we've already seen these like comeback cards revealed like Reversal Energy, Iono, Defiance Band. Counter Catcher is a pretty big card to reprint. This card was pretty good back in the day. It was a very powerful card. I remember it seen quite a bit of play. It's also good in like control decks, by the way, which is kind of nasty. Um, but in more of an aggressive style deck, this definitely is a great card. I mean, making comebacks with the Counter Catcher is good. Having Gust in the same turn of like playing Iono is kind of insane in my opinion. That's what's going to make Counter Catcher good. I mean, imagine being able to play Counter Catcher and Iono in the same turn, dude. That's pretty ridiculous. Um, I mean, this is a great card to have in the format. I can already see decks playing like two to three of these, or maybe two. I don't know about three, depending on what you're playing, but I can see decks playing two of these. I mean, it's just that strong of a card. Now, you're not always going to need to play it, and obviously, if you're ahead in prizes, it's probably not that good. Like, if you're playing, for example, like Lugia V-Star, you're probably not going to play this card because you're probably already going to be ahead in prizes. Charizard EX could play Counter Catcher. I can see Charizard running Counter Catcher. Um, because Charizard does like to spam Gust, in my opinion. One of the ways Charizard is able to win so many games is by just going boss, boss over and over again. Countercatcher could be a nice addition to the deck, because Charizard obviously can fall behind pretty easily. Um, and then, of course, you can Countercatcher and then Rare Candy in the same turn. That, I don't know. There's a lot of really cool plays you can make with Countercatcher, especially with Iono in the format. I mean, this is a great card against Shen Pao, because against Shen Pao, you can, like, Gust the back's caliber and then like Iono them the same turn and cripple their board pretty quickly. So Countercatcher is very good in the game. I think it's gonna be a very impactful card. Definitely keep your eye out for countercatchers because this is a great card at back. And again, it's good for control decks. I mean, control usually never takes any prizes. Now control has a free item gust card. So that's also pretty scary. So definitely a really insane card to see get reprinted. Next up we got Snorlax Doll. Um, I'm not sure I'm a fan of this card because it's very reminiscent of Lily's Pokedoll, which I th always thought was a pretty toxic card. Um, if this card is in your hand when you are sending it up to play, you may put it face down um, in play as if it were the 120 HP basic Pokemon. Anytime during your turn, you may discard this card from play. This card um, can retreat or be affected by special conditions. If this card is knocked out, your opponent cannot take any prizes for it. So it's effectively a 120 HP Pokemon that cannot be um that you know doesn't give up prizes and this could be good in hit run this could be the um the big card that galissapod ex needed i mean i was talking earlier about galissapod ex being good with like mimikyu and clef key well hey man maybe snorlax doll is the way to play it um but yeah this card is actually pretty good um all anytime we see these like doll cards in the meta like robo substitute lily's pokey doll they've always been infamously pretty good and again i was never a fan of these doll cards i always thought they were kind of cheesy and kind of lame cards that kind of created really dumb um, games, but I do think that this card is fine in the game right now. I mean, it's 120 HP is kind of hilarious. Imagine if it had 30 HP and then Sableye was like, I don't care. 120 HP is kind of funny because Sableye has to commit a lost mind and not taking a prize. That's pretty funny. So definitely an interesting card to get revealed. Let me know what you think of Snorlax Doll in the comments below. I'm sure some people might have some opinions on this card, but there you have it. Those are the new card reveals. I mean, Counter Catcher coming back is pretty huge for the game. Yeah, this reprint is pretty huge. Um, Counter Catcher is going to be very good and I think most decks will want to play two of them. Some other cards, obviously, I do think that Mousehold was another cool addition. The EXs were all kind of decent. I mean, none of them were, like, terrible. Armor Rouge is kind of sick. Glissapod might be good. I mean, now that, hey, Snorlax, Doll, Glissapod, Mimikyu, there you go. New Hit and Run deck just dropped. Um, yeah, some pretty cool cards got revealed, and I'm excited to try these out when Paradox Rift comes. I mean, these cards are really only a month away. I mean, Paradox Rift comes out in November, so we're, like, maybe a month out. So these cards are going to be coming soon. Let me know what you think of Defiance Vest also and the new Sages. I like Simi Sage, but, uh, yeah, that's it for the new card reveals. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'll leave a link down below to Poke Beach if you want to go check these cards out yourself. Give them, give them your own read and kind of see what's up. Um, also, I guess let me know down in the comments below. What is your favorite Illustrator Rare that got revealed? We got the Glissapod. We got the, uh... Altaria. I think Altaria might be the best. Glow Spot's kind of sick, too. But, yeah, what was your favorite, like, Illustrator Rare EX got revealed there? But uh, thanks for watching. If you all enjoyed today's uh, video, leave a like. And, of course, if you're new to the channel, subscribe down below and all that good stuff. And I'll see you in another video here on the second channel. Peace out, everybody. Have a good day.